how to loop different instruments back to back without any one bar pause in between recording instruments. This is even more powerful than overdubbing with a standard looping pedal, as this will allow you to get each instrument recorded into separate audio or MIDI tracks that can be further added to later if you like to use this loop technique to help you generate more song ideas in less time than ever before. Hello, my name is Robbie Sko, and welcome to this week's one minute Q&A, except it's definitely not going to be one minute or, or even just one video because we have a very loaded question coming in from Earl Monroe, who is essentially wondering how to set up a looping system like the one I discussed in my last looping video. Check that out here. But now, unlike in that video, and unlike what is commonly achieved in Ableton or any DAW in general, we'll be looping multiple instruments back to back into separate tracks without having to wait one bar or any time at all in between recording your different instrument loops on different instruments. Here's a snippet of Earl's question. He's trying to record, and I quote, four bars continuously and have it split into two different clips of two bars each. It might not be possible, but let me know if you have an idea. Oh yes, it's possible. And the answer to that question led to such a powerful performing and composing tool that I'm actually turning the answer to this question into a video series on how to create the ultimate Ableton Live live looping device. Check the description of this video and future videos in the series to see if the download or supporting materials are available as I wanna make this easy for you to understand and give you ample options for endless customization so you can really make it your own and have a best add to your live show or studio flow. This video and future videos in this series will be added to my CliffX Pro YouTube playlist, which does have some introductory videos to CliffX Pro if you've never heard of it before. Back to the question at hand, which refers to my latest live looping video called the One Click Four Instrument Looper. Now, in that video, I was using a command in CliffX Pro to add fixed length audio or MIDI clips on the fly in conjunction with a weights command that told Ableton to wait a set amount of measures before continuing with the next series of actions. That CliffX Pro command was called SREC Fix, standing for Session Record Fixed Length, which is very cool. So now instead of having to manually pause or click something at the end of recording an audio clip, you can have it automatically loop after a certain bar or beat length. Though this is possible with an $800 Ableton push with CliffX Pro, this plus many, many, many other things becomes possible for 40 bucks. Similarly with MIDI clips, to achieve this, you don't have to have a template populated with all kinds of lengths of MIDI clips waiting to record. You can determine that on the fly using this command SREC fix, and I outlined that in my last looping video. Now, although you can get this four measure two instrument, two measure loop to work haphazardly using SREC fix and wait, I don't really recommend it as it can only be done by losing control of the last E and uh, of the last beat, the last measure of your loop. Or to simplify that, you lose the last three sixteenth notes of the last bar you wanna loop if you use it this way. But this may, this may be better for you if, number one, if you don't have Max for Live because the solution we're gonna talk about later requires Max for Live, or you just have a beat that you wanna use that extra beat to get to the next measure anyway, right? You, you can let the snare and hi-hat hit on beat four if you're recording drums and still move over the next beat. So yeah, let's first um, let's first kind of see how this works. So I'm hitting play on this command. So right there, it did switch from the drums right to the keyboard and the last, like on the E of four essentially is when it switched over. So it only worked because I played a drum beat that did uh, that did end on beat four because I because I knew of this limitation, right? I just did. Uh. But um, if I get one that goes to the uh of four, I assume that's likely going to get cut out. Let's try that out. And yeah, there as expected on the on the uh of four, the last sixteenth note 
the last measure of my loop there it did switch over to the next instrument so like on the uh of track one that i was recording it switched over when it should have been track two so you can achieve this just you're just losing the last 16th note and you can do it with essentially the same command that i outlined in my last video but instead of using the weights command for three bars you can use that weights command for 2.75 bars now i did try going all the way up at the 2.99 and, and even 2.9999 bars but it does just round it down to to those those quarter notes so 2.75 bars is the closest it can get as as far as i could as far as i could test it here's a quick demonstration to show how typing weights 0 0.75 bars or 0 0.99 bars will yield the same result so i just have it set to arm and then weight 0.99 of a bar and then arm again let's take a look at the, this guy right here so i'll turn the metronome on so you can kind of hear when it's supposed to happen so you can see on beat four it happens ready watch again so on forward switch, that's for 0.99, and after 0.75, you see the same exact thing happening. All right, so here we go, four. Same with 0.99, three, four. 0.75, three, four. Yeah, so you have that uh, same thing happening. Here's an example of creating Earl's four bars. Two instruments, two bars each, using essentially the action list from my one-click four-instrument looper video. But instead of waiting for three bars, waiting for 2.75 bars. So that does achieve kind of the way you want there using SREC fix and weights. All right, Earl, so this outlines one way you can achieve that four bar, four instrument, two bars each looping style. And in the next video, we'll talk about how to use the CliffX Pro note trigger rack for Max for Live. And this will not only solve the problem of the last 16th note getting chopped off, but also open up a world of creative opportunities as you can use MIDI notes as CliffX actions, allowing you to program your ideal looping sequence as a MIDI clip filled with powerful actions placed anywhere in time. As always, thank you if you liked and subscribed. I'm looking forward to sharing a lot more producing and performing tips with you. Check out this video to see how to take these looping ideas further. And check out this video if you're still unclear about CliffX Pro and how it can revolutionize your workflow. Take care.